We're live, Manga Chat. Is there music? There's no music. Oh, you want past that? I thought it might be disrespectful to have that theme tune this week, but should I do play the theme the, tune? Play, play the theme tune. All right. I don't know if the theme tune, I know it's a sad episode, it's the Joe Matt Memorial episode, uh, everyone, um, but I, it just didn't feel right to do it without the theme tune, I think it's what Joe would have wanted. Um, yeah, I, mean, I don't know, did Joe watch Manga Chat? I don't know if he ever said he did. I don't think so, I think he uh, he didn't want to be on it, That's all I, I, I know that. <laughs> I think he was aware it existed. But... Yeah, I said that anyway. he was like, oh no, I wouldn't want to do that, that, was, that sounds, it sounds horrible. Like, yeah, I mean, I, I'd asked him to be in anthologies before and stuff, and he's like saying, nah, nah. I offered him money. I thought, oh, that would be the key to his heart, some money. But no, he was, you know, there he, I don't know, he just did what he wanted to do. Anyway, yeah, Joe Matt has passed. Um, a friend of mine, um, you know, a friend of yours, Josh, you always texting with him and stuff. He was, he was just at our, eight weeks ago, he was at our fucking book launch. Um, he, he left yeah. straight after the, the raffle. Um, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell that. Yeah. We thought, uh, I guess our theory is that he came, uh, he saw the advertisement for the raffle, saw the prizes posted uh, yeah. on Instagram and was like, he saw eBay money, you know. Yeah, Joe was a schemer and a scammer. I mean, I could tell you the story about the lottery tickets, the long-winded story about like a punch-drunk love lottery ticket scam and me and Joe digging through the trash in downtown like or Los Feliz or whatever and Anyway, he was a schemer and a scammer, but yeah, just a happy, happy guy. Just I don't know, it's like the last comic, like Joe's last comic, Peep Show was was Joe's big series. Um, yeah, you know, collected as like you know the poor bastard there, classic book, the poor bastard. Um, he didn't put a book out since two thousand seven, I think. Uh, I think Peep Show wrapped up in two thousand six, and then spent the the collection of the last four issues of Peep Show was collected in two thousand seven. So it's been what I say, sixteen years 20. since. Huh? 26 years since a book? 16, I think the math would be there. What, 2007 to 2023? You've got the, the three on either side and the 10 in the middle, 16 years. 16 years, yeah, yeah. That's, that's why I do math. It's all about middles and sides. Um, but, yeah, he'd been working. I mean, he'd been working on the new Peep Show, number 15. He was just going to bring it back, like, screw the gap. Oh, it's Peep Show 15. Here it is. It took 16 years. Here you go. I've heard he's finished it. French publisher claims that he actually finished it. I know he was very close. Um, but yeah, mostly he was just, he was doing paintings for friends. He was always on Facebook and Instagram, like, oh, here's a painting I did for a friend. Here's a really nice drawing I did for a fan. Like, he seemed to live just, he liked to hang out with animals. And he was just painting his stuff for fun, kind of. And yeah. the the Jam sketchbook, famously, as well, is hundreds of pages of, like, him and Amy Mann doing Jam comics. Yeah, yeah he was, uh, I think he was, like, doing, like, big elaborate drawings in a, uh, books for anybody who bought anything off eBay from him. I think my friend yeah. Franco Rosario bought a book off him uh, on eBay and it had a big swamp thing drawing in it. You're friends with Cam Delisario. No. <laughs> yeah, I, I, yeah, it's shocking. Joe just, he was only 60. Um, he's just snapped, yeah, yeah. just fucking gone over the weekend. Um, I, I found out early as I do being a part of the, the professional comics industry. Um, it was, it was a weird 24 hours there. Where Today there's been a massive colossal outpouring of praise and love and genuine goodwill and love for Joe. And like, it's really, it's really nice. And like, you know, some cartoonists go and it's, you know, just a sort of bit of a dull thud or a fizzle, but real like passion. Like, people love Joe. Like, I love the guy. Like I love his work. You know, say what you will about the work and his character in it, but I fucking love it and I'll defend it to my last breath. Um, yeah, it's just, it's kind of fucked up, but people are really just, yeah, throwing it all out there. And, you know, you know it's nice yeah. to see. It was a sad, sad 24 hours where it was just silent. Like, who's going to break this online? Like, just no one's talking about it. Every, but everyone was just processing it in private, I suppose. Everyone that knew him and yeah, yeah. In, in, in the industry. You, know, you and I were talking all yesterday about it and just 
looking at Joe comics and going down a Joe hole and yeah. Yeah, yeah. His phone number sitting on a desk. I mean, I've talked about it on Manga Chat before. Like, let's prank call Joe Matt. Like he, he gave me his number at Skylight and like, you know. It's just it's just, just I'm just gonna leave it there forever. It's just staring at me, you know. Yeah, yeah, you posted that and I wonder how many people with a similar phone number got a call from uh one of your phones. <laughs> Well, I didn't dox him. I covered up two digits with a teardrop emoji. So people would have had to run through the variations of the two digits combinations. I mean, so, it, you know, it, That's a, lot of, a lot of work there. So, you know, but I, I don't know if anyone's that obsessed to try and call. I mean, I, I kind of wanted to call it and just see if his voicemail's there and say, like, hey, it's, you know, it's Joe and like, you know, leave a message. Just yeah. fuck. And, but his phone's probably turned off by the coroner or something or. Yeah, I don't know. He, had, he had a weird old flip phone or something, I think, with no um, no data or something. But yeah, anyway, so, yeah. I, yeah, you know, I, ne I never met him in real life. We like we talked a decent amount, but I never met him in real life, and it was quite like at the Skylight Book launch, just looking out in the audience and seeing him sat there. He's like very striking, kind of uh, like you say, big smiley guy. He's uh, it's like instantly recognizable and like beaming, you know. Yeah, there's so much energy. I don't know, just a zest, a boyish zest. Um, yeah, he was. Uh, I don't know, and he, and he was like his character from the from the autobiographical comics from the uh, you know the, the the Peep Show series. Um, you know, when I had dinner with him for the first time in in 2019, he it was. I've said before, it's like having dinner with Homer Simpson. It was everything I expected. It was like having dinner with a cartoon character. It was. Yeah, it was one of the best nights of my life. It really was. It was you know, I started reading. Peep show in I think oh, 90, 95, I think nineteen ninety five. Um, you know, so he was still doing the comics. I mean, you know, and that, that's, we're talking about like the tail end of eight ball and hate and like ninety five is pretty close to the end of that era of stuff. Um, yeah. But he kept doing peep show until two thousand seven because they were they were so sporadically and slowly put out due to his crippling uh, masturbation addiction. But, yeah, you know, it, it, I was, you know, I was what thirteen or something. I started reading this too young. Um, yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah. how much older? So it's like, yeah, thirteen. Jeez, wait, you said thirteen or fifteen? Thirteen. Jeez. Yeah, getting quite deep into like the the intricate lives of adults with uh, for a thirteen year old. Yeah. Um, it, it, it informed my upbringing. Like I, you know, reading about this guy's travails and relationships and porn addiction and just, you know, and dodgy stuff he'd done. Like, you know, cause people have talked about like the, the episode where he, where he hits Trish, he hits his girlfriend, I think having a fight and he slaps her or something in the first peep show. And like, Oh, he's a monster. And like, yeah, but you know, he's, he's putting it all out there. Like the, you know, the, the id, the monster is showing his mistakes. And as a kid who grew up seeing like my dad, slapping my mum around and stuff like I, it just informed just processing that and just you know seeing the man's side of it and not i'm condoning it in any way but you know just warts and all just you know aside yeah. you know that thing that joe was such a lovely caring open guy um you know but yeah it's you know it's a real crazy series too young i wouldn't want my kid reading it at 13 but uh but yeah, I don't think it, it, you know, I didn't go out hitting women after reading it. I was like, oh, that's bad behavior. And th this man's done something bad and he's ashamed of it and regretful. And, yeah. And also just like, just as an artist, like, gee, like just looking through this and yeah. like these backgrounds and uh, like this face. Yeah. Truly, like, influential on me, like, great cartooning. Like, I remember my older friends, I was, like, 13, 14, 15. My friends were, like, 21, 22, 23. And, you know, during the time I started reading all this stuff, and they kind of made fun of me for being, like, a big Joe Matt stan, you know, because they were, like, oh, you know, clouds and, you know. Mm. And I was, yeah. like, well, Joe Matt, you know. Joe, I, I really gravitated to Joe's stuff. The, the letters pages were so fun. The whole vibe of the comic just... He was so confessional and just breezy and yeah, really good pacing, really good writing, really good inking. All the, the jokes pay off. Like Joe was just a great fucking cartoonist. Yeah. Just, yeah. One of, one of the best. Yeah. I think uh, obviously I got into it 
much later, but it was, it was like still one of the first things I got. I think, um, I think actually this book from the library was like maybe fifth comic I read. What do you got there? Poor bastard. Oh yeah. 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 And just, uh, and yeah, just mind being absolutely blown by this. And yeah, it's like the other stuff it turns you on to, like, obviously it's, you know, you're going to be like, oh, I want to know who Chester and Seth are. Yeah, very influential as well. Like all yeah, the, 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 black, yeah. black balls, the black bricks, all like very influential to me. Yeah. Mostly drawing. I don't. I don't think I like took much influence other than the drawing. I think you can see some of it, but yeah. Well, it's autobiographical, so I mean, you can't steal Joe's life, can you? You're yeah. living your own life, Josh. Your tenured life. That's... Yeah, I mean, I was always, like just impressed by like the honesty. I think I was a bit like you know cowardly at the beginning to like get this honest, and uh, yeah, it's like pretty yeah kind of brave to put yourself out like that. Yeah, I've seen a lot of people saying that and that kind of sentiment. Like, yeah, he sort of you know was really fucking brave and kind of oh you know inspired other people to be more open and you know because I remember early on in my career like you know not write stuff that was too personal. Like, I hold back. Like, oh, I can't so ashamed uh you know as i got older i started to like fuck it like that's the stuff people really respond to the really personal hardcore stuff you know because they're like yeah it's visceral yeah so he really you know he, he did that rolling stone hot cartoonist uh 1994 i believe i think wow. probably when this came out rolling stones hot cartoonist i think i actually saw the actual issue once with um with him in there like you know a little hot cartoonist in the, in the rolling stone hot issue that's pretty cool. That's pretty fucking rock and roll. That's, yeah, that's yeah. impressive. What's the equivalent now? Uh, there's, there's there no... isn't one. No. There isn't one. No one cares about cartooning anymore in the main. All the magazines are dying. All the websites are dying. No one focuses on comics because there's no hate clicks in it or there's no you know money in it for them. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, I'm missing some of the floppies from the, the original six issues. So I'm missing number three. And number five, and I jumped onto fucking eBay yesterday after I heard the news, and I was like, I need to just for the letters pages because I said earlier it's the letters pages that was such a huge part of it for me. Like, there's a letter in number ten from like Rivers Cuomo from Weezer, and and one of the creators of the British sitcom Peep Show, Sam Bain, writes a really critical, quite rude letter to Joe in there. And then ten years later, he'd go on to like steal the title of Joe's comic for his British. TV show, which is one of my favourite TV shows ever. Probably you too, Josh. Right, yeah, yeah. I had no idea about the Sam Bain uh, peep show, peep show thing. It's quite um, yeah, yeah, interesting. I, I just, heard. I wonder if it's subconscious, oh, yeah. you know, really just like, oh, I'm just going to take the name, you know. I talked to Joe about it at dinner once. I asked him, but I forget what he said. I was a bit tipsy, like, ha ha, you know, having a laugh, having a drink. I've just forgotten what he said, but I think he, he Joe knew of Peep Show. He'd seen it. He approved of it. He didn't really, you know, he wasn't like those cunts. Um, but yeah, they they stole the title. Um, and again, the letter was really rude. And like, it was about the new switch to Joe's uh, childhood serial, Fair Weather. And Sam Bain was like, oh, big mistake, like really regressive. Like, you know, you can't do it like Chester. Like, and it was... And Joe took it really nicely in the letters page. And but yeah, I was reading that years ago. I was really rereading. And I was like, hang on, Sam Bain, like London. I was like, that's fucking peep show, guys. They've nicked the fucking title. Yeah, I, I may be the first person to discover that in this, you know, small world of comics and British comedy. Um, Investigative uh, reporting. Detective Hanselman. I'm Louis Theroux-ing the shit out of these Joe Matt letters pages. And yeah, yeah anyway. Great little letter. Every issue, you know. I remember I'd flash back to like reading these in bus stations. I'd be traveling and I was in number 13, especially. I remember reading that in a bus depot and just the letters page. Yeah, little doodles and little letters. His mum, Joe's mum, who's still alive. His mum and dad are still alive. Joe was only 60. Like, there's long letters from his mum and a little jam comic here with Ivan Brunetti and, and Chester Brown. Nice. Uh, yeah, it's got me real, uh, real down. Um, it was a real, real kick in the dick. Yeah. 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 I, yeah. What were you going to say? I was going to say one of the best, like especially for Autobio, you know, specifically. 
he never really, I mean, he, he did all the Batman coloring and Grendel and all this mainstream stuff for the money um, early in his career. But, he, you know, aside from that, he never really did any, um, anything else. It's like, I only do Megan Mogg. Um, yeah. He only did autobiographical Joe Matt comics. He never did like a, I'm going to do a sci-fi book, in it, you know. Yeah, something that doesn't get mentioned much because I guess because his comics are black and white, but his colouring and his painting is like, yeah. that's really like visually where he shines, I think. Like some yeah, of the, the painted covers are lovely. Yeah, some of the paintings he posts on Instagram just like stunning. Yeah, nice, no, really nice gouache work. Like, yeah, beautiful. He'd paint like old toys and stuff, his childhood, his weird stuff and and himself doing things and yeah lovely paintings i, I wish i had one um so yeah the best cartoon is facebook account yeah yeah <laughs> like informative funny yeah it's like I, I think i joked i did a tr truth zone years ago like 10 years ago whatever i did a joe matt episode and i proclaimed that his facebook was basically just peep show like we didn't need him to keep putting out peep show because the facebook served the same yeah. function of just you know anecdotes and stories and joe curmudgeonly bitching about things and just talking about his life and it's like this works like i don't really i like the drawings but i don't need them yeah there's some big long diatribe like 10 years ago about a copy of duck soup the marx brothers movie that he was trying to return or something had been ripped off at a second hand store and so this lengthy account of like this grievance about an old dvd he was famous for flipping stuff but he unfollowed me on Instagram for a good while after our first dinner, I think, because I promised to send him some books. And he was like, make sure you sign them. Don't sign them to Joe. Just sign them. And I was like, I, I know what you're doing, Joe. You just want the books so you can flip them on eBay. I know what you're up to. And I never sent the books. And he must have been pissed off and he unfollowed me. But yeah, yeah I don't know. He kept turning up to all of our signings and shows. And I'd see him and we'd have a waffle. And he was always smiley. Yeah, he was posting about you like a, um, I don't know, like a month ago or something about Skylight, wasn't he? That's nice. I don't remember. I, the algorithm now, I just missed posts. I was looking at Joe's feed the other day and it's just like, there's all this shit I've missed. I didn't see his birthday post from just like a couple of weeks ago. I would have said, hey, happy birthday, Joe. Like, but thanks, Instagram, for not showing me uh, friend was, posts. Well, yeah, I mean, like on Facebook recently, he was talking about like, just like different printings of uh, Fairweather and the poor bastard, like the colors on each one and like telling people like buy this one, but don't buy this one. Like the color. <laughs> right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, I just don't know. I don't know. His books aren't even in print. I think, I, I think D and Q just let them all go to print. Well, D and Q is a different company now. I mean, you know, Joe is from the Chris Oliveros years with like Chester and Seth, and they were like the three, like the the Toronto three. And you know, it's it's Chris Oliveros stepped down. It's different now. It's I, I don't you know, it's it should be called like Quorn and Drawtily or Bortily or something or something slightly different. But yeah, I, I don't know. Will they reissue his books now? There's been this colossal outpouring of love, but I guess hard to market these books in the current day and age as well in the Me Too era. Like as I said earlier, you know, it's the, the part of the big poor bastard collection is that he hits his girlfriend and uh you know there's been some you know online waffling you know just, you know times change the way like people have stopped like in ghost world as much young ladies used to like love the acerbic kind of droll girls of ghost world and now they're like oh they're so bitter and they're horrible and you know social mores change and but yeah, yeah but still people would love joe i don't know it's been fucking 16 years since he put a fucking book out people still fucking love him People have been saying the nicest things, and I, I haven't seen anyone say, like, oh, what a cunt. Everyone's just said, like, fuck, he was nice. Fuck, what a lovely guy. Like, yeah. yeah. I, guess, I guess, is, uh, oh, sorry. What were you going to say? I just picked up another book and just like, get distracted and I'm all over the place, Josh. Oh, I just said sad, that's all. Sad. Oh, okay. I thought there was a start of a nugget of commentary, but I'm just, I'm just, my, my brain's flying around. What do you got there? It's the it's the drawn and quarterly or born and jortily or whatever they're called now. It's the twenty five years of drawn and quarterly book that came out around the same time as the Fantagraphics one, almost in competition. Um, and to be fair, this one is beautifully designed, um, far better designed than the Fantagraphics one, which I think they were irritated by. Fantagraphics was like, oh fuck, this <laughs> looks better. And it, it really, it, this is a this is a beautiful book. Uh, this is one of the first copies. Um, 
that I got at TCAF when it came out. So it's full of all these little things. Like there's like a little letter in here, like a, a facsimile letter from Seth from, from Inkwell's End. And there is there is a Joe Matt section here. And there's a there's a little little envelope here with like drawings by Joe, a little facsimile envelope. And it opens up. There's a little like letter inside from Joe. I was sad looking at this yesterday. It's just a, a letter from Joe to Chris Oliveris. And a very small amount of copies of this book had this all this extra shit. There's all this stuff peppered throughout it, just like falling out of it. It's really cool, but but it is, I guess, Joe's last sort of published work, I suppose. Uh, yeah, unless yeah. you count, unless you count, paid for it by Chesty Matt, which Kilgore put out in I think 2016. But I don't really count that. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's you know, I, I guess this is stuff from Peep Show 15, or I don't know. It's like a story about LA and like when he was almost getting the HBO deal and a new girlfriend. Everyone was just waiting for him to talk about all the LA years and do the LA stuff at Peep Show. I'm sure it was really interesting and funny, but he never got there. And, and this strip, Seth's farewell speech, I read this yesterday, and this kind of reads like a eulogy. Um, this is when he's leaving Toronto. And yeah, great, great strip. Um, I don't know how easy it is to track this book down, but yeah, this is Joe's uh, final proper published like Peep Show work. Um, yeah, it just ends with him like yelling at Seth and stuff. Like, I'm the fucking pearl. You're the grain of sand. But, uh, it's it's a really great, sort yeah. of sweet yeah. story. It's like twelve pages or something. Yeah, don't know. Yeah. Well, yeah, this really is. This really is a lovely book. Sorry, Josh. I didn't say anything, but. I have that book actually. I think while I was looking at that one in the library, I remember. I don't remember any of that stuff in it, so I imagine some. Yeah, there. no, there was a TCAF exclusive. It was when the book launched at TCAF. Like, oh, okay. Twenty fifteen did this come out, or twenty sixteen or something? I can't remember. But I was at the old the old Toronto Comics Arts 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 Festival Arts Festival. Um, a Freudian slip there. Um, yeah, no, great book. Oh, who cares when it came out? But so much great stuff in here. Great rare strips and rare stuff. And yeah, I have the, the special one, you know, like an Anders Nielsen letter or something here. And just all sorts of fun, different little things. Nice. A true collector's edition. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, books. Joe loved his books. He loved his old books. Yeah. Smelly yeah. old books. Yeah. Sigh. Yeah. I wish I'd called him more. I wish I'd called him. I wish I'd told him to go to the doctor. I wish I'd said, Joe, go to the fucking doctor. Take care of yourself. This is men, older men. They're too scared to go to the doctor. I had a full physical recently. Have you been to the doctor recently, Josh? Oh, I don't know. I don't know. No. no, I will, though. I promise. Yeah. I was just talking about agent as well. My, not, my, not, my, not my book agent, Arlo, my entertainment agent. Um, <laughs> but yeah, he was like, I haven't been to the doctor either. I was like, what are you doing? You're a man of a certain age. You've got a kid. Like, you have to go to the doctor. It's just men are too proud to go to the doctor. Oh, this is not a comics broke me. Like, oh, we can't afford to. This is just men who could afford to go to the doctor who are just sitting around like, oh, it'll get better on its own. Like, you know, oh, I don't need to worry. You know, oh, my yeah. feet have been numb for two years, but it'll go away. It'll get better. That's not going to get better. Go to the fucking doctor, you dumb cunts. You know, just yeah. Jesus Christ, don't let things go undiagnosed or, or don't let things be diagnosed and then not do anything about it. Yeah. Anyway, yeah. public service announcement. Cartooning is a tough craft. I mean, like, you know, not in any wanky way, just like, you know, I get out cycling every morning trying to take care of my legs. I'm sitting here cross-legged on a cushion, scratching away for like minimum six hours a day. A sedentary mm -hmm. lifestyle. Um, you know, I, I do my... My bicycle kicks. I'm wearing loose pants. I do bicycle kicks. You've got to stay healthy. Yeah, I need to get back into the cycling. Uh, my new place, there's like a cycling path. This is not interesting to anyone watching, but there's a cycling path that goes about an hour each way. So, you know, I need that's, to buy a bicycle. That's exciting to me. I mean, Manga Chat viewers will know that I love riding my bicycle and I used to do episodes out riding my bike, which my wife says was disrespectful to the guests. And she was probably right. Yeah, I think uh, I don't think it crossed the threshold into uh, like outright, uh, you know, abuse. But it was 
I just, I like to multitask. Like when I was writing this morning, I was talking to like a buddy about some business. I was talking about agent, like, you know, it's, it's like, just like being on a treadmill or something. You can't judge me. I'm busy. I live in LA. I'm a Hollywood guy. Come yeah. on. Yeah. It's uh, very intruding on your exercise time if you think about it. Essentially, uh, you know, you're lucky to get me on the blower, frankly. If I'm doing a shit, just deal with it. But I'd, I'd never do that. I'd never, I'd never. Oh, right. oh, there we go. Cycle Cleveland. Says biking episodes are great. Well, yeah, of course you would cycle Cleveland. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want from Manga Chat? More cycling. <laughs> yeah. Oh. Anyway, old Joe. I don't know. We had a nice waffle about Joe. <coughs> yeah, a bunch of comments here. What's, what's going on? Just people talking about stuff. Someone's saying, yeah, oh, it's Cycle Cleveland. Never read a Joe Matt comic while he was alive. Well, get onto it while you can. Hit up eBay and uh, Let's see, if pick you them up. The comments, if you click on the comments, do it, does it come up as well? If I do? Yeah. Um, uh, here we go. Show. Oh, it does. Well, gosh, I, I have the power. Wow, I'm in. Nice. Okay. How do you make it go away? I just click it again. Oh, oh, okay, cool. I can do that now. That's exciting. I need yeah. to learn how to use this tech that we've bought. Um, I yeah. wish we could have got Joe on. Like You asked him and he said no, but... Yeah, he said it's great. Yeah. Like, I'm out, and he said he's just, like, he hates that sort of thing. It's like, fair enough. It's a bit... Yeah. You know, it, it, it is nice it is it is fair enough it'd just be nice to have a record like i think noah was trying to get him on as well with van skyver and it'd just be nice to have a record of joe just telling some stories and just you know i'd like to go watch it like oh shit there's a recent interview with joe waffling it's for an not, hour it's not a lot of like video interview that sort of thing is there I'm not sure. I'll, I'll probably go down a rabbit hole and have a look on the youtube but yeah there's probably not because i mean his prominence in comics was the 90s and you know the early to mid 2000s so that's people weren't doing youtube back then um yeah. yeah so a lot of it's lost to time i mean the comics journal interview i might go read that later the old comics journal interview or something dusty old one but yeah. oh hit, hit, hitler guy's back how you doing <laughs> yeah no no one did have autism in the 90s <laughs> it's a new thing Oh, I can't wait to get monetized on here so we can get demonetized. I'm just so excited yeah. for it. It's going to be fucking great. Yeah, yeah we do have a, we, we, we've got a guest this week as well, Josh, don't we? Let's, uh, let's yeah, talk yeah. about that. Guest week. Um, uh, this, yeah. is, we, this isn't the main manga chat. This is <coughs> – sorry. This is just a – you know, a, 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 this is a mini chat, but we have a proper manga chat at the end of the week. Yeah, we were doing our midweek minis. We're trying to ramp up the content. We've got another little midweek mini we'll be doing, uh, bite-sized content, and then we've got a big guest coming on, and we'll hopefully have a have a, have a a guest uh, every week. <laughs> yeah, no, it's going great. New Manga Chat's great. Uh, I should say, Josh, we should both say in unison, like turn our submarine keys, thanks to everyone who watches and is following yeah. us along as we try to grow this thing uh, we, we are very appreciative of you giving a shit about you know comics and what we have to say about comics and just yeah. going along on this this journey this ride um into a new golden age of alternative comics let's let's all make it happen together yeah we're having fun josh's having a vape there a celebratory vape burning down the house with his little birthday candle lovely lovely yeah 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 Oh, I, I can't wait to get a pack of convention fags for short run. I'm so excited to just, you know, as a treat, have a smoke. Yeah, I think it's going to be. Yeah. Yeah, going that's, to be what so that's what I'm doing. The Eric Reynolds just going to a convention, a pack of smokos, bang, bang. Yeah. yeah. Make it a treat. Oh, you know, smoking every day, mugs game. Sorry, Josh. No, you're vaping. It's not as bad as tobacco, probably. Maybe. Yeah. I'd make it worse. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah, we'll get, uh, I'll get my own packet this time. I won't be like uh, a scrounging sponge like at Comic-Con. Well, I'll buy two pouches. When I go to my tobacconist, my cigarist on the way, I'll buy two pouches, one for me, one for you. Because yeah, it can be hard to find the, the good stuff that we smoke. i got to go into the humidor and get it and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'll get a couple of pouches and uh, we'll have a good time. Uh, Ethan, how you doing, buddy? Good to see. We've got to get Ethan Lowell on in the next uh, couple of weeks or something, the coming days. We've got a long list of guests, but we'd love to get young Ethan Lowell on. Hot Shot from the UK. Check him out. NAF. That's what his comic's called. NAF oh, 1, 2. Yeah, I think they're sold out maybe, actually, but 
They shouldn't be. They're great comics. Do you remember this clothing brand? I used to have a, I used to have like a pair of jeans, the NAF jeans and a NAF, uh, a NAF coat. People used to, uh, it was like very off, shit off brand. People used to make fun of me at school for wearing NAF jeans. It sounds fucking awesome for starters. And no, I don't think so. I, I used to wear a lot of weird shit when I was a kid, cross colors and uh, surf brands. But yeah, no, I never heard of NAF. That sounds fucking cool. Yeah, I, I thought it was cool, but yeah, no one else in my school thought it was cool. Yeah, that's a shame. Yeah, I mean, the obvious thing that they kept saying to me was those jeans are naff. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, yeah, they are. They're naff. They're naff jeans. Yeah, a British <laughs> brand, I guess. But yeah, they, I guess they were trying to be ironic and like, you know. Yeah, I think yeah, it must have been kind of like an OK Cola type deal with uh, with naff. Yeah. Yeah, so it's like calling you, you know, shit pants. It's, you know, it's my new brand of pants. They're called shit pants. So it's not, that's not going to go down well. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, what else is going on? I don't know. Joe, just this, this sad Joe stuff. Um, everyone dip into their peep shows and read some Joe and keep the man alive. Keep him alive in our hearts and minds and our spirits. And again, for some French publisher has allegedly said that he did finish Peep Show 15. So. I'm not sure if that's going to be released or, you know, I feel like a vulture, but um, <laughs> for cuck, yeah. <laughs> what is the French Connection UK? But yeah, yeah I always saw that I've cuck. I've thought about that brand for a long time, but yeah, I remember yeah. they were kind of they were they were they were the like the clothes of people who would beat me up. To be honest, they kind of the, the kids who wore Lynx Africa when they were eleven. Yeah, bad yeah. boys. Kind of, <laughs> Yeah. The stink of links coming around the hall. Oh no! Oh, it's a Java beating today. Fuck. Or oh, Axe. Sorry, Americans. It's Axe. We're talking about Axe body spray. It's links in the colonies. Yeah. Um, I was trying to remember all of them recently, and I couldn't. I remember like Java, Africa, and I couldn't remember any other ones. Oh yeah, there's like Tiger or something. Like I, I, I don't know. I looked it up once. There were some really weird ones, some batshit crazy promotional ones. Yeah, we should get some. We'll wear some to short run. We'll slather ourselves in axe or we'll import some links, the stuff, the proper stuff. Yeah, I think yeah. if we bring back, like, you know, the link smell, naff jeans, FC UK sweaters, I think. Be- <laughs> I'd Good. love to do that. Oh. Yeah. I'll, I'll never just flash into my mind. I'll never forget the old uh, spiders, people, crew like Ben Mendelwitz, Char Esme. They all dressed up as um, telemarketers. And they had like matching polo shirts with headsets and khakis, and they were behind like a really professional-looking table. Like it was, it was fantastic. It was Comic Arts Brooklyn or BCGF back in like 2012 or something. I just saw pictures of it. I was like, oh, that's funny. It's like you and me and Cowdery were talking about going to Comic Con next year. Yeah. We just have a booth. It's empty except for a concrete mixer, a functioning concrete mixer, and we're all just like shirtless in dungarees with like shovels. This is some gravel. I always think Silver Sprocket looked kind of cool, all in their matching boiler suits at the festivals. And they used to have the bunk bed. They'd be there in their matching boiler suits, like a team with their their bunk bed they can hide behind. Some people said that's wanky. Some were like, so fucking lame. It's like, ah, fuck you. It's cool. Like you can hide in there and have a sneaky drink. You can have a nap. It's cool for the artist to say, hey, this is exhausting. Do you want to fucking lie down? You know? Yeah. They're doing some, you know, they're doing some all right work over there, marketing wise. And uh, when I say good work, I mean marketing wise and business wise. Enthusiasm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, 10 out of 10, what Arby's doing with the yeah. business. Uh, good, you know, good dream. We're hanging out with Silver Sprocket a bit at the, uh, the panels at Comic Con. I said to Harvey, like, good work, doing a great fucking bang up job, good store, you know, just good people out there selling good comics. But anyway, get your Joe Matt comics. So uh, you got to buy them on eBay because uh, drawn a quarterly, apparently. I think I guess let them all go to print. Uh, scared of the backlash, maybe. Uh, I don't. Th- I think Fantagraphics was asked to do it, and they were like, well, we 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 do it maybe if you put something new out. You know, but I, I, that's true. Like, you know, marketing, like, hey, it's a bunch of old Joe Matt books. The one where he hits his girlfriend from back in the 90s. Like, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Oh, here we go. There's an hour long 2022 Joe Matt interview on YouTube from some random channel. Thank you, Wally Gropius. That's fantastic to know. I'm probably going to go watch that and have a cry. Um, I've not made any wanking jokes. I, I'm known for my wanking jokes. I'm famous for them. And I just, I can't, like, about Joe. I mean, it's, 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 
if anything was ripe for some insane wanking jokes, it's it's Joe Matt, but uh, he was a friend. Um, I loved him and respected him. I can't. Yeah, there'll be that moment where you know that I saw you wake up, sun's coming through the clouds. You know, maybe a couple of months from now, and you'll be able to make your first wanking joke. Yeah, first Joe Matt based. I mean, I'm specifically talking about Joe Matt based wanking jokes. So I just think it's crass. Um, he was more than just a masturbator. It, it, it didn't define him in my eyes. It was, um, such it seemed like just talking. It seemed like such a sweet guy. And uh, yeah, I like the, one of the things I was like thinking about. I was like reading through some of the messages. They it's like we didn't really. I, I never talked to him about comics. He just seemed very curious about like very personal, like very like intricate details of my personal life and i think he's kind of like just interested in other people like that you know yeah he was just a nice guy like could talk to people and you know there's nothing yeah. to be scared of yeah uh, i wish his hbo show had happened as well back in the day yeah he was hey it's all hollywood for a while he was like in a poker group with like uh bunch of actors from that heroes show that nbc yeah. superhero show from yeah he was like, like the two asian dudes in it like uh the, the little guy and the taller guy uh he was hanging out with them or something playing poker yeah wow that's cool hero that was the name of the character h-i-r-o uh -huh. yeah. clever clever naming there in a show oh, called oh, heroes what was his power time travel i believe he like blinked and he like went yeah. through time and stuff he went back to samurai times in like the the second series. Heroes was pretty cool for the first two seasons, I thought. Yeah, I, I remember. Really. I was like, I, th I think that's around when I lost interest. But it was like, yeah, it was really. Good it was that age of like it was uh, Lost, Prison Break, Heroes, like this resurgence in like big blockbuster like prime time oh. drama schlock, um, pre Marvel, yeah. like you know, sort of the yeah, I don't know. Yeah. yeah. It was a good time. It was an entertaining time. And Joe Matt was pumping, well, not pumping out, but putting out issues of Peep Show every two or three years. So, um, yeah. So, this number 11 came out. What was it here? Uh, 98. Number 12 uh, came out in 2000. Number 13 in 2002. So, about two years. It's 2006, this uh, last one here. So, every two years. But that's, you know, that's. How many pages is this? That's 24 pages of comics over a two year period. That is quite slow. Um, yeah. You know, well, I mean, they're doing dense, other things. They're, you know, they're, they're dense, they're beautiful. It's, you know, oh, yeah. And I mean, I guess I you, if you're just doing purely autobio like this, how much are you going to, if you were doing three issues a year, how much are you actually living, you know? Yeah, that's true. That's a good point. Yeah. yeah. But just he was always like 20 years behind and like you know assessing his life like you know but yeah but yeah i really want to read the hollywood stuff but anyway we should wrap it up and you know yeah. we're going to try and keep this bite-sized and uh but yeah i don't know we, we've got to start trying to make some shorter bite-sized content but this was anything goes this was just a little chat about joe and how much we like manga joe and that's what we should call these manga bites oh that's not bad we'll, <laughs> Good we'll, we'll think of something Oh, but yeah, I love you, Joe, um, wherever you are. Um, you know, I'm not going to say it. I could have said, I hope you're wanking up in heaven or whatever, but I'm just not going to say it. Um, no, you wouldn't say that. It's not It's not the time for it. But yeah, love you, buddy. And uh, everyone go out, you know, read some Joe work. If you've not read Joe's work, it really is great. Um, check it out. Um, I think you'll probably enjoy it. I recommend getting the floppies as well. Like you get the book collections, but you know it's cheap enough if you go on eBay and buy the floppies because then you get the letters pages and you can. I don't yeah. know. It's my, it's my preferred way to read stuff. I like you know I like the letters pages. Yeah. All right. All right. Cheers, Josh. Take care of yourself. Get to the doctor. Um, take care of yourself. Um, yeah. I'll, I'll see you. I'll talk to you tomorrow. Um, or probably today. I don't know. But, yeah. All right. Someone's at my door. What are you doing? I'm, I'm with, all right, bye, Josh. Signing off. <laughs>